First of all, we can learn that we can walk as Enoch walked with God. We can walk with God as Enoch walked with God. It very plainly says, Genesis 5, 24, and Enoch walked with God. Now, how many of you realize when you go for a walk, it implies relationship? Am I right? Enoch had a relationship with God. How amazing to find way back in the book of Genesis the heart of God, that God really wanted to have fellowship with mankind, that He wanted to have a relationship. You know, the same God that walked with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden walked with Enoch, and He wants to walk with us. Amen. You see, Christianity is more than a religion. Don't even refer to your faith as a religion. This is not a religion, my friend. Christianity is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? It is a personal relationship. Come on. He knows our name. We know His name. He understands what we're going through. Come on, somebody. He, he's with us. We can talk with Him about what we're going through. Now, I know that there's some of you who love your dog, and you go for a walk with your dog. Does anybody go for a walk with the dog? All right. Nobody. Okay. Maybe you take your cats for a walk. I don't know. Cat people. And it's great. And I know it's all right to talk to your dog. That's okay. But they really can't talk back to you very much. Well, you may have what you feel is a warm, loving relationship with your dog. It's not like a relationship that you have with somebody who's kind of on the same level as you, right? When Jereen and I go for a walk, we know that we're going to talk to one another on the walk. Am I right? And that's the same way when we go with a, we're for a walk with Jesus. It's like the old songwriter used to say, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other could ever known. And if you stop and think about it, what a, there is no greater privilege that could be given to any man or woman today than that the king of the universe, come on, would be right here walking alongside of us. And the beauty of it is, when you really get to know who Jesus is, you begin to sense him, you begin to know his presence. You you know he's there all of the time and you can be teaching a class in high school you can be you can be walking through Walmart you can be washing the dishes and all of a sudden you'll realize that he is right there today right with you come on you can be in the valley at the lowest place of your life or you can be on the mountaintop but God will be right with you walking with you well some would say I don't know how to walk with God it begins, first of all, by accepting Jesus Christ. And then from there, you begin to build a relationship with Him. You need to spend time in prayer, time in worship, time in the Word, a time practicing solitude, listening for His voice. And I'm telling you today that you can, go, you can walk with God just like Enoch did. So get up in the morning and start talking to Him. Amen? Get up in the morning, amen, and start listening to Him. Him. Acknowledge His presence. Practice the presence of God. Paul describes how a relationship with God will affect our walk on, in, in his epistles. In fact, did you know that he uses the word walk over 25 times in his epistles? If you have a relationship with God, it's going to affect the way you walk. Hello? You're pace, you pace yourself with Him. Come on. You'll find yourself walking in the Spirit and not in the flesh. You'll find yourself walking in love. You'll walk properly as in the day, not in reverie or in drunkenness. You will walk by faith and not by sight. Come on, somebody. You'll walk in the good works that God has prepared for you to walk in. You'll walk as children of the light. Come on. I just got a word for you today. Go take a walk with Jesus, all right? Walk with Him. It'll change your life. Come on, is there anybody who says, I enjoy walking with the Lord? Amen. And then we can please God as Enoch pleased God. I don't know about you, but when my life is over and I enter heaven's gates, I want to hear the Lord say this to me. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. How many of you want to hear that? 
Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. That, those, are, those are words that God is saying, I'm pleased with you. Am I right? And how many of you, when you walk with the Lord uh, uh, this afternoon and you have your time of prayer or tomorrow, you want to hear Him say the same thing? How many of you know that's not the only time He says it when you get to heaven? He can also say it in the morning. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. The Scripture tells us this. It says, For before He was taken... He, Enoch, had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I tell you, Enoch had a faith that pleased God. And his faith, I believe, was manifested in the day-to-day decisions that he made. You don't really read of one single miracle that occurred in the life of Enoch. And a lot of people think, well, that's what faith's all about, man. Faith is all about believing God for the miraculous and the supernatural and calling those things that are as though they weren't and, and miracles and divine healing and people getting raised from the dead. How many know it does take faith for that? That's a part of what faith is. Come on, somebody. But I'm going to tell you, there's another part of faith that just is obedient to God. Come on. God's will for you and for me is to walk out our faith and obedience to the Lord every single day. And yes, we're going to walk through a world that like Enoch's day is full of wickedness and full of sin and full of problems and full of political division and, and full of people shooting others in synagogues and all kinds of things that are like that in the world. But let me tell you something. Our faith Faith says that we're going to continue on and be faithful to the Lord. Two things he obviously believed. He believed that God exists. He God existed. Is there anybody in this house that believes that God exists? I'm not just talking about a mental ascent. Oh, yeah, there's a God up there somewhere. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. He believed so much in that God that existed that he said, I'm going to seek him, and he's going to reward me for my diligence in seeking him. A lot of people kind of have this picture of Enoch, that he must have kind of been a hermit out there, just kind of him and God walking. No, 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 no. That's not the picture that the Scripture paints. It tells us this. Enoch walked with God for 300 years, and guess what? He had sons and daughters. He had a family. This was a family man, right? He lived in the culture that he existed in. He was part of that world there. And all those years, he didn't go up into the mountain and hide. But for all those years, his neighbors knew him as a man who was set apart because this was a guy who sought God on a daily basis. This was a guy who was diligent about his relationship with God. Oh, how our culture today needs men and women of faith. Amen. Not on today and off tomorrow. Not hot today and cold tomorrow. Not on fire one week and on the fence another week. Come on. We are God is looking for people who say I'm going to please God. I'm going to get up every day and I'm going to seek Him because He's a rewarder and I know who He is and I believe Him. And I want to please Him. Amen. And God blessed him with sons and with daughters. And God blessed him with what we at least know of two revelations of the future. Methuselah being a sign that judgment was to come when he died. And then we're going to look at the other one in the book of Jude in just a moment. But, you know, God rewarded him. He got so close to God that one day the Lord said, hey, why don't you just come on up here and be with me? <laughs> Let me just pick you up and take you away. Come on, did you know that when you, it says when you take one step to God, draw near to God, He'll draw near to you. Draw near to God. He'll draw. If you keep drawing near to God, come on. One day you're going to meet Him. Hello? Uh, that's a beautiful thought. Come on. Amen. Then God rewarded him. He didn't have to face death. Now there's another guy that the Bible says pleased God. In the scripture. How many of you are still with me today? Amen. Another guy, his name was Jesus. Jesus pleased his father. The in scripture says that God had the testimony of Enoch that he pleased God. 
Did you know that God the Father had the same testimony about Jesus? Listen to this. Matthew 3, 17. It says, And suddenly a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That voice from heaven was the Father speaking of His only begotten Son saying, He pleases me. You say, well, what did Jesus do to please God? What Jesus did uh, was He did the will of the Father. He did the will of the Father. I love these two verses, John 5 and verse 30. He said this, I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. If you want to live a life that pleases God, seek His will first and foremost above everything else. John 8 and verse number 29. It's a verse that every believer ought to memorize and say, I'm going to live my life like this every single day. Jesus said these words. He said, for I always do those things that please him. And that's what Enoch did. He wasn't a, a guy that went around doing miracles, at least not that we know of, but, but he, the day-to-day -day things that he did, he pleased the Lord. So, you know, we kind of have this idea that, you know, people of faith are standing there commanding the mountain to move. And yes, that's a part of faith. I'm not belittling that. But here's what I'm saying. Let me tell you what faith is. Faith is believing that doing the will of God and pleasing him is the purpose the purpose of, of your life begins in the morning when you choose to please Him. You get up in the morning and you say, Lord, let me just uh, get up and spend a little time with You. Someone just a moment ago told me on my way to work, I, I just pray, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. How many think that pleases Him? Am I right? Right? Absolutely. It, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's the many, many, many choices down through your day. As you get in the automobile, or what, what kind of music are you going to listen to, right? And don't get me wrong. I'm not against listening to a little worldly music. Not real worldly, but you know what I'm saying? A little secular, a little jazz, okay? I'm digging myself into a hole. I'm liable to fall into it in a minute. All right, let's move right along here. At any rate. But let me tell you, I mean, how many of you think that it pleases the Lord when you say, listen, I'm going to listen to some uplifting music on my way to the house of the Lord. Come on. I I'm going to uh, turn into the pastor's YouTube channel and listen to that anyway. Search Bob Millsaps on YouTube and you can find that just a free commercial right there. Everything that you do, you need to say, does this please the Lord? Have you ever been to work and everything's going in a downward spiral? Everybody's upset at the boss. Everybody's negative. Everybody's griping. Everybody's angry. It just seems like the whole thing is just dying as a slow death. But listen, here's what you do. You step out into the hall for a minute and you say, God, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Give me a go-to attitude. Give me the faith to overcome this thing. How many of you think that pleases God? That's what I'm talking about. It's the everyday things of life that please God. Like when you decide that you, your wife wants to watch the sixth or seventh Hallmark Christmas movie in a row. And you say, okay, honey, let's do this. That pleases God. Come on, somebody. When you treat your wife with love and respect... When you treat your husband with love and respect, come on. When you treat your neighbor with love and respect, when instead when that guy cuts you off on the freeway, you bless him. It pleases God. Come on. When you live by the golden rule, come on. When you speak kindly to people. The other day I was in Sam's Club and there was a sister, Catholic sister, sitting on a cart right by the water aisle. And the Holy Spirit said to me, just go tell her you'll be glad to put her water on there. I said, oh Lord, are you sure? Have you ever talked to the Lord like that? I was thinking, oh Lord, I hope she only wants one or two. I said, can I help you, sister, with that? How many? She said, yes, if you would. How would you like? Ten cases of water. <laughs> Praise the Lord anyhow. And the thing pleased the Lord. Am I right? 
Come on, that's what I'm talking. That's how he lived. He wasn't a miracle worker. He was a God pleaser. Is there anybody in the house that says, I'm going to be a God pleaser this week? Amen and beyond. And then we 